Hello whistleblowers everywhere and this tune breakdown today is a very seasonal one. It's called Christmas Eve. Um, it was uh, originally called Tommy Coyne's Reel and Tommy Coyne I believe was a Galway fiddle player. Um, but the reason it was it became known as Christmas Eve was apparently uh, it was played on Irish radio uh, RTE uh, on a program on Christmas Eve and because uh, Tommy Coyne didn't actually have a title for it, uh, it became uh, known as Christmas Eve. Now I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate but that's how the story goes. So Tommy Coyne's real uh, but more often known as Christmas Eve. So a lovely tune and as usual we're going to do a simple version of it. No ornamentation apart from playing notes which are the same by separating them with cuts. So again, we'll probably play this fairly slowly at 60 to play through and then we'll look at adding some ornamentation and then as usual at the end we'll talk about adding some variation. Now, there's an awful lot of variation you can do in this uh, reel, however we won't be doing huge amounts of variation. I'll just throw some ideas at you. Uh, again like everything else you can add your own variations, it's always good to uh, experiment with some of your own ideas and some of your own variations. So here's Tommy Coyne's Reel or Christmas Eve um, and I'm going to set my click to 60 and um, I'll play it through. So even though this reel is written in 4, I'm going to count it in cut common time which is 2-2. Two, two. So each click of the uh, metronome is going to be 2 beats, so it's going to go one, two, two, two. One, two, 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 here we go. So this reel is a three part reel. We've got the A part which we play twice, B which we play twice and C which we play twice and then we can go back to the beginning and play it through again as many times as you feel like it. Um, so we're going to have a look at the A part now. So we'll play through the A part as it is and then I'm going to introduce some rolls, some cuts and also this is a good tune which we can add a cran to the very first note. So I'll play it through as written first um, and then we'll look at some ornaments. So here we go. So I don't play that E 
on the last time because to go into the B part, I think it's good to have a break, have a little rest, and you can also catch your breath as well. So the very first note, I often like to put a cry. So cram, difficult ornament to master, uh, and it's difficult to show you slowly. Um, what I do is middle, index, middle, and then I do an A cut. Now this is what's called a long cram, and the long cram I do on a dotted crotchet note or a dotted quarter note. And what you can do is you can add an extra A cut and then cut the note again but I don't suggest you do that as a beginner uh, certainly not as an even as an intermediate player because it's tricky so the, the simple cran is middle index middle So to play it slowly, but it doesn't sound like a cran at that speed. You have to play it at full tilt and it's, it's kind of getting the rhythm of the drumming your fingers to get the right rhythm. It's a percussive in, um, ornament and it's a drumming of your fingers so literally you are using a percussive kind of effect on the whistle to get the cram yeah you don't actually you're not hearing the notes so you're hearing the percussive effect so at speed i'll put it in Now, if you want, you can get really fancy and add an extra cut. So it's going. So you're cutting the A twice at the end. When you put it in the tune. All the simple. Now with the extra A chord. And you can hear the extra A chord makes the cran sound a little bit fuller. So what we're doing, cranning the D, long rolling the G, which I have been doing, and then going like this. Now you can put a short roll on that B or just cut it. So that's doing the first two measures. So again. And again, if you want to cut those Bs. Again, with that third bar, I'm not really doing anything in terms of ornaments other than adding some cuts. So the third bar, I'll maybe cut that high B. And then a short roll on the G. So I've got the short roll on the G on the, on the last bar on the first line. Cut the B, and cut the A. Do the whole of the first line. And again. So the second line, we can do the same thing. So we've got a long roll on the um, on the G, 
short roll on the second bar B. I can put a cut on that B in that group of four quavers. So then the third bar, cut the B and short roll the second A. And then cutting the B, so cut the A on the next bar. Now you can either play that pickup E, that quaver E, or you can miss it out and just use it as a breath. Um, you may need to do that. So let's play slowly with the ornamentation that we've just done through the A part. Now you can either leave that G long or you can do uh, a long roll so you could go so let me play it this time with the G long rolled at the end of that second um, second line Okay, so now we've got that, let's try it at 60 with the click. Two. And I'm going to leave the um, E there, the pickup note, as a rest so I can take a breath, which will bring me into the B part. Okay, so beginning of the third line, this is the B part. So we'll play it through without any ornaments, just so we get the right notes and the right feel. Then we'll look at adding some ornamentation. So. And again, when I come to repeat it the last time, I'm going to leave off that pickup note quaver A as I'm going to use it for a breath. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look at some ornaments. So, cut the B. Cut the B and cut the E, so the first notes of those group of four. So. Second bar, I'm going to cut the A, short roll the G, so, let's play those two bars, so bars one and two of the third line. So bar three, we've got long roll F, long roll E. So long roll the A, play the F, long roll the G, and play the E, like this. And 
then the last bar on the third line. Now you can either just put that as a tap, or you can short roll it, but you may need to tongue the uh, A short roll it. So it's easier just to tap that. Um, it's hard to go. You have to do a little pause and it's um, only real way of doing it smoothly is to tongue that short roll. So if you don't want to tongue it, you can just do it as a tap like this. Or tongue it as a short roll. I'd be inclined just to tap that. So pretty much the same thing with um, the next part. So we've got cut on the B. So bars three, short roll the A. Now what we can do is we can do a little crown, a little cheeky crown on that D. Now, on the short crown, you can either just do middle, index, middle. Or you can add that extra cut. So we go. Or the easy crown, short crown. So adding that extra cut makes the crown sound a little bit fuller. Um, it's fine to do it either way, uh, but I tend to like to add that extra cut because it makes it sound fuller. So if I go... And again, we've got that long roll on the G at the end. Uh, again, if you need to take a breath, then you can just cut it or even just do a short roll. So you could go like that, or just pick up note. So when I get to the C section, which is coming up next, I'm going to leave that little pickup note A, and I'm going to take a breath. So that's A and B. Let's try uh, the B part now at 60. One, two. So the rule always follows that if you need to take a breath, then you're going to have to either just cut the note instead of doing a roll or a crown. Um, yeah, you need to get the breath in and breath always takes priority over everything else. So if you need to breathe, you might just want to play the note itself or just do a cut uh, and then use part of that note value where you would have done the ornament to take a breath. Right, so that's the B part. Let's have a look now at the C part. So onto the C part now, and we have lots of short rolls, um, quite a few of them. So here we go. So we're going to cut the B and short roll that second G. 
So we're on for the fifth line. So cut the B, short roll the G, cut the next B, so put that together. So bar two on the fifth line. So again, we've got the short roll on that crotchet G. And I like to put a cheeky cut on that G uh, in the group of four quavers at the end of the second bar. So. So bar three. So short roll on the crotchet G and a short roll on the crotchet B. Cut the first B. So cut the B, G, tap, uh, cut, tap, cut, tap, A, G. You might want to take that bar out and practice that separately because that's quite tricky. Yeah. And then the uh, the last bar on the fifth line, we've got the same repeating figure E A short roll E A short roll. So let's do the last two bars of the fifth line. So this is important now where your fingers are soft and relaxed. It's going to be so much harder if there's tension in your fingers to get those. Yep, your fingers have to be relaxed, otherwise you're going to really struggle to get those rolls in. Right, so we're on for the last line. Cut the B. And the short roll on the G. And I'm cutting that B in that run of uh, quavers going up from the D, so. Again. Then we've got the G roll, so the short roll on the G, and then, so those two bars, bars one and two on the last line. Again. Right, so here on the last two bars, we're going to cut the first note of each. So cut the B, G, cut the A, F, cut the G, and then just play the D and the B. Okay, so then we've got, um, I would leave that little E um, because I'm going to use it as a breath. So let's do the whole thing now, slowly, uh, the whole C part, really slowly and carefully uh, with the ornaments which we've put in.
Or if you want, you can just leave that last note playing. So now let's try it at 60. One, two. One. Well, now we've got the whole tune let's try playing it all the way through at 60 so i'm going to play each part twice as uh, the form goes so here we go one two one two Okay, let's have a look at some little variations we can put in. Uh, there's loads you can do on this tune. Uh, I'll just do a few just to show you some ideas. And as always, you uh, are encouraged to try your own. So let's have a look at the A part. So. So I like to put another little cram there. So. So instead of going, I'm going. And again, another crown. So I'm just substituting um, certain bits for uh, the crown. In the third bar, uh, on the first line, on the first bar of the second line and where it repeats that figure so let me play first as written and second with the variation so here we go So all we're doing is just substituting a couple of figures and adding some crowns. Uh, I wouldn't do too much else on that first A part. Again, there's lots you can do, but uh, I'd keep that fairly simple. So the B part. Now we can have a lot of fun with this B part. We can add some tr cheeky little triplets. So I'm 
So I'm going B, A, B, C, D, E, D, E, F, G. Now you can use the C sharp, even though it's not in the key signature. Uh, it's really not going to hear much of a difference. I'll show you. Now with C sharp. So either C sharp or C natural, whichever you find easiest. Uh, now you can triple tongue them and make them staccato. Or staccato. So I like to make them staccato just to add a bit of variety, yeah? So next bit, and again, long roll on that A, so what's written, and then take a little breath, so you just leave that as a rest, so. Oh, you could turn it into a long roll. Okay, it's a variation. Uh, what I like to do, uh, you can either do the same thing again, but I like to long roll on the beginning of the fourth line. You've got this figure. So I like to put a long roll on the B, up to the D, long roll on the E, up to the G. Like that. So uh, first time you can go... So long roll on the B, D, long roll on the E. Okay, next bar. Long roll on the G. And then. So let's have a look at the whole of the B part now. Okay, C part. Um, so here's what we've got. And again, we can put a cheeky little triplet in. Either legato or staccato. So. So, third bar on the uh, C section. So you could go. So do a, a repeating short roll. Now you can do it twice or even three times. So twice you can add that written figure. Or you could just do a series of short rolls. And again with the last bar on the fifth line. You could do. Just do a series of short rolls. So the fifth line. Um, or you could just add a couple and just leave that one uh, as a cut on the last A. So let's try that. Or you could roll. So you're doing... Sorry.
takes a bit of practice to get those running uh, rolls, especially on the A. Okay, last line. Again, we can use that little, I'm not going to say cheeky because I've used that word way too much in this. So we're going to use um, that, that little, I um, can't think of another word for cheeky. Uh, we're going to use that, that little uh, triplet phrase. Again, you can use the C sharp or C natural and you can do it uh, triple tongue tukata or you can do it legato. Now on that uh, second bar, you can do again some running rolls. Now on the last two bars, we can get really fancy here. You could do all triplets. Or you could mix it up and go. Or you could do the first three. Or you could do all four. So loads of options there for you. Um, let's do that last line again. Yeah, so a few ideas for you to try with uh, with variation. So let me play it through at 60. First time I'm gonna play it as written with the ornamentation. Second time I'm going to put the variation in. So here we go. One. Two, So that's it. That's Christmas Eve or Tommy Coyne's Reel. Um, have a go. Doesn't matter how much ornamentation you put in. You can put in just a little bit if you like. Or you can add the ones that I've done. Or you can even add your own. Um, there's limitless scope with this. As I've said, as long as you more or less adhere to the structure of the tune and the notes of the tune, you can add variations to the ornaments. You can add little passing notes to make things into triplets. You can add crans. You can add cuts. You can add taps. You can have double taps if you like, um, even though we haven't done any of those yet. Uh, I'm sure we will do it uh, in, in time. So I hope you all have a wonderful um, Christmas or whichever religious ceremony you choose to celebrate. Um, and a wonderful, happy and prosperous 2023. So this is me, the whistleblower, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas, and I shall see you all shortly, probably in 2023. Um, so have fun and take care, everyone, and I will see you soon. So before I go, I'm just going to play through Christmas Eve.
Here we go.